again everybody, Boyd here with you and welcome to part two of our UFO TV series Alien Flying Saucer Buildup. I uh, put this model off to the side over the summer but we're finally back to it now. We want to get this one finished up and then we're going to move on to our Shadow Mobile. Uh, both of these models are in studio scale and I got these from a company called Kit Cash. Kits for Cash I should say. They're over in uh, they're a UK based model company and you can find them on Facebook. Uh, if you uh, contact them over there. I believe the gentleman's name is Ian. Uh, they were excellent service. When I ordered my kits I got them within two weeks and that was including air shipping which was very reasonable for what I thought because these were really heavy models. But uh, I'm pretty sure they're still available over there. I haven't been over there recently to check but like I said you can check it out for yourself on Facebook. And um, they were also talking about um, producing a studio scale interceptor from the uh, television show as well and that'd be a really cool kit so I'll have to go over there and sometime and look myself, see if they've uh, got any further on that one. But we're back to work on the uh, alien UFO here, and uh, since the first video, I got all the uh, main part of the ship put together. The spokes are put onto the main body, the upper and lower halves, and I've got it sitting on this little Polar Lights base. This is a, a really simple base that comes with some of the small Star Trek kits, the 1-1000 scale. I had an extra one, and I just thought it was perfect for the model. I can I can turn it when I'm working on it and all that. I'm going to put it on something better a little bit later with some green glowing lights. It'll show up on the bottom of it. But uh, for now, it's going to work out really great. So what I went ahead and did since the last time you saw it was I sprayed it with some silver. I wound up using um, this Tester's Chrome. And uh, I experimented with a couple different kinds of silver. I used some uh, stuff from VHT. It's a kind of, They're kind of an engine paint company, but they make some chrome look uh, paint and I tried that and it just never would completely dry I think it the the problem was, was is that it was uh, due to the nature of the shape of this model I had to spray it on there kinda thick you know to get in all the little recesses and everything um, to get it you know co uh, coated evenly so you couldn't put down like a really light coat to start with and it just got piled on there so thick I let it sit for about a month and um, it would seem like it was dry to the touch but when you would handle it or whatever uh, it would leave little marks in the paint like it was still soft like lead or whatever so uh, I wound up stripping that back off I just used some purple power and it didn't hurt the model at all and uh, just let it sit in there for about three or four days and just uh, had to come back and lightly go over it with like a little uh, with some water and a little uh, toothbrush and got it all cleaned back up and then I went ahead and resprayed it again and this time like I said I used this tester silver and uh, it still dried a little slow too it took about a week before I was really confident in it but I it's completely dry now and I can touch it and all that and it doesn't have any problems. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do a little bit more painting detail on this. We might even get it finished up in this video. I'm not sure. We'll just see how long I'll, each one of these segments takes. But on the bottom edge here, all around the bottom, there are these black stripes that need to go on this. You can kind of see on those slots right there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mask those off and get those painted on with my airbrush. And then this little ring that goes around the top right here is supposed to be sort of a metallic green so we're going to spray some uh, of my uh, Tamiya transparent green over the top of this uh, silver paint here. And it should give that really uh, a really similar look to that. and should look just like it. And then we've got these little pieces here that need to go on. I call them the guitar picks. They are kind of teardrop little shaped pieces. And they go on all the way around the perimeter on these spokes. Now, uh, the model I have done here is sort of a done, done in sort of an aluminum look. And what they did on the original studio models, they uh, created these little... Uh, paddles here and they put chrome reflective tape on those and so uh, when they attached them all the way around here they had a motor in the actual uh, studio model and it would spin and so when the lights from the studio would hit that it would give a really cool kind of a glittering effect and uh, look pretty cool on camera so I wanted to make sure I did the same exact thing they did there so I put some chrome foil on each one of these parts and I kinda had a you know take a flat item and run down uh, each row to make sure I got it stuck to all the little uh, rib detail that's on each one of those so it really gives it a kind of a nice reflective look and so we're going to be getting those put on we're going to paint the bottom here paint the top and then we've got these little domes that go on this um, one that goes on the top here kind of I'll just kind of test fit it on here for you uh, and there's four little caps that go on the top this only fits one way uh, fairly good here there I think that's pretty close and you can see it's supposed to kind of sit there and it's uh, the edges of it not quite touching the spokes there but it's just kind of a neat looking little uh, feature that they added to that and we've got the bottom one that goes up from underneath and kind of cups the whole thing in like that 
So we'll be putting those on today too. Hopefully, like I said, we might be able to get this all done in this video. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up on the bench here and start uh, uh, spraying our black stripe details on the bottom there. And then we're going to finish up by doing the green stripe around the top. And then now I think we're going to go ahead and put the, uh, the little paddles on here and get those all glued in place next. So I'll be right back with the uh, painting of the bottom. See you in just a second. Okay, back with you again, and I just got done painting on the black stripe detail on the bottom of the uh, saucer here. Just had to take my time and uh, mask those off and get those little stripes painted on down there. Just use some regular blue painter's tape here and uh, my heat gun and my little airbrush here to get that sprayed on there. So we're ready to go with our next step here. Up around this uh, ring area here up on the top, we've got to paint this little green area. So I've got my little airbrush here loaded up with... Um, some transparent green by Tamiya. That stuff's really popular, works really cool on a lot of stuff. And it should look pretty nice uh, on top of this silver because we should be able to see a little sheen uh, coming through there. So let's go ahead and spray this. I'm gonna just do a really light coat at first here. And uh, go all the way around. Okay, you can see we got a nice kind of uh, metallic green going on up there, and I didn't want to put it on there too thick. I had this mixed with a little bit of reducer to thin it out, spraying it at really low pressure, about 25 pounds. So that's how I'm going to leave that, guys. I want it to look just like that. We want to see that silver coming through a little bit, so I'll go ahead and dry this off and pull the tape, and then we'll show you how that looks, and then we're going to work on getting the dome and the lower part put on. And uh, I think we're going to go ahead and finish this whole thing up in this video since we're uh, moving along pretty fast here. We'll go ahead and get all the little paddle pieces put on and we'll call this one finished up. So I'll be right back with uh, getting the dome worked onto the top of this. Okay everybody, we're back with you again and um, I've got the upper acrylic dome mounted and I've got the lower acrylic dome mounted. So I'm working on the last part of this now. It looks like we are going to get this one finished up in this video. So that's good. You can see I'm putting on these little... Uh, paddles that go all the way around now. I took my hobby knife and scraped off the paint on the edges here so we've got nice uh, resin on resin contact and I've got to glue these all on one at a time so you guys can follow along with that. I'll start off showing you how it goes and then we'll uh, cut ahead and show you finishing it up. So I'm just using a little drop of CA glue on the spoke here and uh, see we got the first one stuck down there so this next one needs to go the opposite direction. These were uh, up and down the way they had them mounted on it. I'm just making sure I get it nice and straight and all that. So we have a kind of a pattern like that. And I'll just work my way around here. Next one pointing down. Oop, I had that one on there and I pulled it back off. Some fit kind of tight and some are a little bit loose. Okay. I'll make sure we keep it nice and straight. Been waiting a long time to finally put these on here. I knew this was going to be the uh, the last part about building this thing, and uh, had some pretty neat detail to it. Overall, it's been a really fun model to work on, and uh, might come back and show you this uh, a little bit later once I decide on uh, a little base for it. I'll probably do something really simple, but like I said, I think it might be kind of neat with that uh, chrome reflective finish that we uh, put like a glowing green lights underneath of it or something like that to give it a little animation. The studio model didn't have any type of lighting in it at all. Um, they would show it on the ground once in a while. Uh, in the forest or whatever when they were one one had landed and it would have kind of a green glow around it and stuff like that um, kind of a neat effect but uh, 
and it would fire lasers out of it every once in a while, but uh, for the most part, no lights. Getting our right around here pretty fast, so we'll just keep going. Really like the way this looks. Pretty neat. And it is a one-to-one -one, um, scale of the original filming miniature, so that's pretty cool. You can actually call it a studio model. They would hang these from the ceiling and they had a uh, self-contained motor inside with a battery. And I was watching some behind-the-scenes stuff on UFO on uh, YouTube and uh, they told some pretty funny stories about how these things would go kind of spinning out of control and fly off the wires and stuff. They had a, they dreaded every time they had to film a sequence with these things, especially if they had to have a moving back and forth and stuff like that. It was really hard to pull it off because they wanted to do kind of a gyro effect too and they would want to wobble and stuff and really a pain to work on apparently. So. interesting stuff. Down to just two left here. Finally the last one. And we ended up just right here. You can see it's alternating back and forth. We didn't wind up with uh, two of them that were um, the same next to each other. So there we go. There's our little paddles on there. And we can just kind of spin this really quick. And you can see um, the effect that the original model had. And I think that's pretty cool. So. There's our UFO, guys. Um, I'll pick the camera up here off the tripod here and kind of just give you a be little bit better view of it here. Pardon the noise. And um, basically there's a good shot of what it looks like. You can see the stripes on the bottom. And uh, that gave it kind of a neat effect when it was spinning too. And there she is, boys and girls. The... Uh, Classic UFO alien ship. Looks like my battery's running dead right here at the right time, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed um, following along with the build on this one. It was a lot of fun working on it. Turned out really nice. I'm going to let it dry here for a little while now, and then we'll go ahead and put it up on the shelf. But uh, if you guys have any questions about this or where to get one of these kits, you can uh, drop a comment and I'll try to help you out. And uh, we're going to be back with the next part in this series working on the awesome... Uh, Shadow Mobile, which is studio scale as well. It's a huge model and it's really detailed. And we're going to be working on that one next for our UFO series here. So can't wait to start on that one. Be bringing that to you really soon, everybody. All right, that's a wrap for this one, guys. We'll see you next time. Take care and happy modeling, everybody.